I'm going to send Walt some emails when I'm done here today. That was John Gruden speaking for the first time since resigning as Raiders head coach, which as a loyal Raiders fan, you know I'm excited about. I'm Brandon Perna, huge Raiders guy. I think I summed it up pretty well. That's a crock of shit. <laughs> After it was announced that the Raiders released their 2021 first round draft pick offensive lineman Alex Leatherwood, I couldn't resist doing an entire episode devoted to how wrong John Gruden and Mike Mayock seem to be about almost all of their personnel decisions after they took the reins atop the Raiders organization together in 2019. Today, we will chronicle the huge draft reaches, the poor signings in free agency, the emails that forced Gruden to resign. I'm ashamed about uh, what has uh, come about in these emails. And we will relive the real life horror film starring Chucky himself. There's nothing innocent about child's play. Because even a child would have played the draft better than Mayock and Gruden. Welcome to a special edition of... I'm Chucky. He's something, isn't he? This is Andy's. Oh, poor Andy. Even has a little football on his back. All right, this time, balls deep. Today's episode is sponsored by Manscaped, the global, dare I say, interstellar leader in men's testicular grooming and hygiene. Manscaped now offers the Platinum Package 4.0, which is the ultimate pube shaving and body washing kit. Think about it guys, you've got two balls and one penis. That's three. So if you order the platinum package, you can say I'm triple platinum. Now this comes with everything. The lawnmower 4.0, which is Manscaped's best nether region hair trimmer yet. They even added a light to it, which honestly is super helpful when you're grooming around your balls. And it is simply the best pube trimmer out there. And I haven't used another body wash or shampoo since Manscaped introduced those items into their lineup and their aluminum free deodorant smells so good, sometimes I just try and sweat on purpose. This package also includes the weed whacker for your nose and ear hair. That's four of your five face holes. Can we get a Manscaped toothpaste, please? You know the deal, use my link manscaped.com slash goodsports to get 20% off your order, plus two free gifts and free international shipping. Let me take you back to the year 2018. Head coach Jack Del Rio was fired after a six and 10 record, even though he and the Raiders had a 12 and four record the year prior and had Derek Carr not broken his leg, may have made a strong push in the postseason. Derek Carr has enjoyed one of the finest passing seasons in Raiders history. It's broke, it's broke, it's broke, it's broke, it's broke. Del Rio certainly wasn't the answer, but at the time, he did not seem like the worst coach in the league. Team owner Mark Davis, though, was ready to move on because he had a giant hard on for former Raiders coach and current ESPN broadcaster John Gruden. Mark Davis wanted John Gruden back in Oakland so much that he was willing to lure him away from ESPN by offering him a 10-year, $100 million contract. The kind of contract no sane team owner would give a head coach who's been away from the game for a decade. Not even Shad Khan. That said, at the time, I think Raiders fans were genuinely excited to have Chucky back at the helm. Don't fuck with the Chuck. Now Gruden coming in would be paired with GM Reggie McKenzie, who I thought was doing a decent job with the team in terms of bringing in good players through the draft. Now he wasn't flawless and the 2016, 2017 drafts were bad, but he drafted impact players like Amari Cooper and absolutely nailed the 2014 draft with Khalil Mack, Derek Carr, Gabe Jackson, Justin Ellis, and had the Raiders not been too dumb to let him go, Shelby Harris in the sixth. The point, McKenzie won NFL Executive of the Year and basically dug the team out of irrelevance with the 2014 draft alone. The problem, John Gruden has an ego. 
An ego that's larger than the pantry that holds all of his son Deuce's protein and steroids. Gruden wouldn't go a full year before he made sure to oust McKenzie so he could bring in his guy, Mike Mayock. You know, from television. And I think they're gonna change the entire direction of the oh, franchise. Oh, oh it's, it's Lamar Jackson. Now, Joe Flacco has not been as productive as his salary would indicate since they won the Super Bowl. Ozzy, Eric DaCosta, John Harbaugh roll out a bold new era. It's Lamar Jackson time. Okay, so Mayock was actually pretty good on TV and honestly is probably too nice of a guy to work with Gruden. I think Gruden needs the type of uh, strong-willed personality to tell him to fuck off to function correctly, and I'm not sure that's Mayock. Don't fuck with the Chuck! But before we get to those two working together, we have to look at the immediate mark Gruden was leaving on the Raiders organization. And not a good mark like this. A bad mark like this or this, or this. Oh God, don't name your kid Mark. Now, I should note Gruden and McKenzie did draft left tackle Colton Miller in 2018, and he's turned into a solid player at the position. I'm sure that was McKenzie's call though. Everything was par for the course, until Gruden decided all of the best players on the team would be better as a collection of untapped potential in stockpiled draft picks. He essentially went full rebuild philosophy when he already had a playoff caliber roster. Nine months into the job, Gruden made his first controversial decision and traded away the Raiders' best defensive player in Khalil Mack to the Chicago Bears. At the time, Mack was considered one of the most complete edge rushers in the NFL, a premium position that Gruden didn't value. That trade netted the Raiders a bunch of draft picks, which in theory is nice if you hit on all of those draft picks. You know what else is nice in theory? An expensive set of steak knives. Unless, of course, you give those knives to children. Do you know what happens when you give knives to children? About murder. Oh God, no, yeah, they murder the babysitter. They murder the babysitter. Now the Khalil Mack trade occurred September 1st, 2018. October 22nd, John Gruden gets the bright idea to trade away his best wide receiver and Amari Cooper to the Dallas Cowboys. So two of Reggie McKenzie's home run draft picks were gone, all because Gruden wanted to put his own stamp on the team. Instead, he was leaving a shit stain. Like the great first year Raider head coaches before him, John Gruden followed in the long tradition of finishing four and 12 his first season. A touching tribute to guys like Lane Kiffin, Dennis Allen, and Norv Turner. Gruden got the guy he wanted. What could go wrong? Hold on, hold on, hold on. How bad were the Gruden and Mayock drafts really? I have to ask. And as much as I want to hate on them, I have to be honest about the fact that some of what happened was simply bad luck, specifically to the 2020 draft. Gruden and Mayock's main problem was reaching in the 2019 draft and reaching again in 2021. They reached so often that it became a punchline. It's like they were first time fantasy football drafters and every single year, with the second overall pick in my fantasy football draft, I select Kirk Cousins. That's what it feels like they did. Together, Gruden and Mayock had three drafts. Here's what happened to their first round picks from 2019 to 2021. Keep in mind, they had five first rounders to use in 2019 and 2020 alone because of their trades. 2021, Alex Leatherwood, cut. Leatherwood may succeed somewhere else, the Bears just picked him up, but in classic fashion, Leatherwood was a second round talent that the Raiders reached for at pick 17. Credit Gruden and Mayock though for finding Nate Hobbs in the sixth round, who looks like a great corner. 2020, Henry Ruggs III, cut and in jail. To be fair to the Raiders, Ruggs was playing really well before he got cut. In fact, he was on pace for 1,000 yards in 2021. Unfortunately, he decided to get wasted, drive home from Top Golf, and kill a woman and her dog in a fiery car wreck. Beyond that horrific event, the only team who thought Ruggs was the best receiver in a very deep draft class was indeed the Raiders. 2020, Damon Arnett 
also cut. Arnett was cut for making threats on his Instagram Live, was later picked up by the Chiefs, got arrested for charges on assault with a deadly weapon, and is currently playing for nobody. He's also a rapper going by the name NWG Suave. Nwaga Suave. On the rise, but fire when I crap. Look me in my eyes, tell me what you see. 2019. It's the draft everyone will point to and laugh. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why? This was supposed to be the draft that saved the franchise. With all of the ammo, the organization stockpiled in the Khalil Mack and Amari Cooper trades. 2019, they go Cleland Farrell. His fifth year option, declined. Farrell was a massive, massive reach. At best, a late first round prospect who went number four overall to the Raiders and has totaled just seven and a half sacks in three seasons. This was a massive reach at the time uh, and not just in hindsight. Basically, the defensive version of Dan Jones. 2019, Josh Jacobs, fifth year has been declined. Jacobs has been an average running back and you don't want an average running back in the first round. You want great. And you certainly don't want to sign an average running back to a second contract. That said, I really do hope Josh Jacobs has a career resurrection somewhere outside of the Raiders. With the final pick, Acquired in the first round from the Amari Cooper trade, the Raiders select Jonathan Abram, whose fifth year option has been declined, and he is widely considered one of the worst safeties in the NFL. You can see that the Mayock and Gruden drafts at the top were busts. All of it. To really round out 2019's draft for the Raiders, they also just traded away their second round pick, Trayvon Mullen, to the Cardinals. So unless Cleland Farrell, Josh Jacobs, and or Jonathan Abram ball out, they could all be gone after this season. That's three firsts and a second gone. However, that draft was insanely good for the Raiders on the back end. The Raiders found one of the best pass rushers in the league in Max Crosby, tight end Foster Moreau, and of course, God's gift to small average bodied men, Hunter Renfro known grape consumer. And I think that's where Mike Mayock shined. In the second half of the draft, when I think Gruden didn't force him to take his picks. Gruden was smart enough to know that Mike Mayock was smarter than him, but not man enough to allow Mayock to shape the team. I mean, how do you not trust this fashion forward duo? That said, the draft is just one part of the equation. The other, of course, is free agency. The Rams just won a Super Bowl, ignoring the draft and crushing with free agent acquisitions. If the Raiders were known for reaching in the draft, well, they were also known for signing old free agents and overpaying for guys who didn't work out. I think everyone remembers how poorly the Antonio Brown situation played out with the Raiders. Were there giant red flags surrounding Antonio Brown before he came to the Raiders? Yes, but it's not like the Raiders were the only team desperate for his services. The Bills traded for him first before AB axed that deal. If you watched Hard Knocks that season, you saw John Gruden trying to work and compromise and relate to Antonio Brown, but that's a fruitless task. <laughs> Brown burned his feet in a cryo chamber, refused to wear the new league standard helmets, and then called Mike Mayock a cracker and forced the Raiders to cut him. The Raiders also overpaid for corner LaMarcus Joyner that offseason, getting just two bad seasons after giving him a four-year, $42 million deal. Vontez Burfecht, another free agent acquisition, was actually playing fairly well before getting banished from the league for another helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. Tackle Trent Brown required a lot of money, was a good pickup, but at the time made the Colt Miller pick look like a bust. The Raiders eventually traded Trent Brown back to the Patriots, so that didn't pan out. They also traded their all-pro center, Rodney Hudson, to the Cardinals because Hudson did not want to play for John Gruden anymore. They turned uh, that trade into Divine Diablo or Malcolm Kuntz. Other players that didn't pan out when Gruden was there, Jason Witten, Jordy Nelson, Nelson Aguilar, Tyrell Williams, Corey Littleton, Solomon Thomas, and the list goes on and on. There were good players the Raiders picked up, 
But I think if your issue is coaching, a lot of those guys won't work. <laughs> when free agents don't work out, depending on the contracts they are given, you end up with a lot of dead cap. Dead cap is not what the NFL wished for when Colin Kaepernick was controversial, but money counting against the salary cap for guys no longer on your roster. The Raiders currently have the sixth most dead cap space with 45.4 million, mostly due to Gruden and Mayock's decisions. Most alarmingly, we also learned that Gruden blew up a deal that was in place set up by one Dana White to bring Tom Brady and Gronk to Las Vegas in 2020. If you recall, Dana said, And it was almost a done deal. And at the last minute, Gruden blew the deal up and said that he didn't want him. Which means Mike Mayock's job was fake since he was, you know, the GM. Uh, who should be actually making those deals. <laughs> anyway, the funny thing about the pedestrian football, the aging free agent acquisitions and draft reaches was that Gruden was locked in with his 10 year contract. There was no riding the ship until 2028. Until, until the NFL, while investigating the Washington commander, stumbled across a bunch of inappropriate emails that John Gruden had been firing off like he was Don Rickles. The emails contained racist, anti-gay, and misogynistic language, which honestly probably did not get the commissioner's attention. What alerted Goodell was probably the part where Gruden called him a pussy. The NFL then leaked some of those emails to the world, and in 2021, John Gruden was essentially forced to resign. After his resignation, Gruden sued the NFL for singling him out in those emails. Basically, John is saying, I wasn't the only one sending things like that in emails, right? Right, guys? He also contests he sent those emails while he worked at ESPN. The NFL states he was sending some while he was with the Raiders. Uh, that lawsuit is ongoing. And if I were a lawyer for the NFL, I'd just show Gruden's draft history in court and ask the judge, would you trust this man? Apparently Gruden wants back into the league, uh, which he himself revealed while speaking at the Little Rock Touchdown Club. Well, your mom's not real proud of that. He's a foul mouthed little fella, this guy, Chucky. I mean, all he does is kill people in every movie, so. That he has a book cover where if you turn it to one way, it gives one face and you turn it to the other. What's that called? Is there some kind of name for this thing? What do they, what do they call that? Uh, it's called three-dimensional. Three-dimensional, wow. I didn't write that book. I don't even know the guy that wrote that book. <laughs> I swear. If you got a job open, put me down, baby. I'll, I'll be interested. I think I summed it up pretty well. That's a crock of shit. And damn, that's, that's actually why I sort of love John Gruden. He just says crazy shit. Whatever's in his head comes out of his mouth. He's like an upside down Pez dispenser. It's his greatest strength and weakness at the same time. It's, it's shameful, but uh, I am a good person. I believe that I, I'm, I, I go to church. I've been married for 31 years. I got three great boys. I still love football. I've made some mistakes, but I don't think anybody else in here hasn't. Uh, and I just ask for forgiveness and hopefully I get another shot. Oh man, he really played the I go to church card, didn't he? Uh, I guess that explains why his favorite word is and and I think Gruden does deserve another chance in the NFL. I think all of us would be more than entertained to watch him draft again. And that's what the NFL is about, right? Entertainment. Look, if the NFL is going to allow Deshaun Watson to play, then they have no cause to forbid John Gruden from coming back. I know I may be in the minority here. I'm not a racist. Uh, but I think sending emails with shitty things in them isn't as bad as sexually assaulting women. Knock on wood if you're with me, okay? And I don't think Gruden can ever come back and be a head coach because I don't think he's good at it anymore. I don't think he's the worst head coach. After all of that shit I just listed off, the Raiders weren't even the worst team in the league. So with a lot of bad decisions, they still functioned better than other organizations, which is crazy. I think John Gruden though stopped evolving at some point, like most men do. And I don't think players relate to him. Always in a state of rage. Uh, I was a backup quarterback in college. I wasn't good enough. I was from a small college. 
Uh, the only way I could get by was I have to, boy, I, I'm going to kick John Daly's butt. I got to get in a state of rage. I got to put myself in a state of mind where, boy, I hate the Chargers. And I want my coaches and my players to hate the Chargers. I think he can still be a good play caller in the league and work as an offensive coordinator, but he has to change. His shtick works for TV, but the players, they see through his bullshit. It's like playing for, for Coach Gruden the first time around and he was there. Hell. We didn't like each other. He, he doesn't like young guys. A man like that cannot be given the security of a 10-year contract. It's counterintuitive to what makes them good at their job. They require pressure. Mark Davis should have fired Gruden the moment he heard this was his catchphrase. Knock on wood if you're with me. That is the worst catchphrase of all time. And yes, it is far worse than... Let's ride. And I say that... I say that as a Broncos fan! <laughs> oh, I tricked you Raiders fans. The whole time I was dumping on your team as a Broncos fan. But everything I said was true. And I went. <laughs> Thanks for watching. That's good sports, balls deep. Check out the Antonio Brown episode or any of our other balls deep episodes. We got the 2012 season, the 2008 season. They are more in-depth analysis and reviews of NFL things.